I'm going to show you a really cool pattern that allows you to only memorize half of the major scales in order to know all of them. And you only need to memorize the easier half of the major scales. What do I mean by the easier ones? I mean the major scales that don't have as many sharps or flats in them. If you don't know what the circle of fourths and fifths is, that's totally fine. You don't need to know what it is in order to understand this pattern I'm going to show you. But for those of you who do know what this is, basically this pattern allows you to just memorize the key signatures or the major scales that are on the top half of the circle. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so what do you notice between these two scales? Take a look at them, and I'll tell you three different things that I notice when I look at them. So the first thing that I notice is that they both start with the letter D. Okay, they start on different notes because this one starts on the note D and this one starts on the note D flat, and D and D flat are two different notes. However, they both start with the letter D, right? That's my first observation. I also notice that one of the scales has sharps and the other one has flats. And the third thing I notice is that the two notes that are sharpened in this D major scale on top, this F sharp and C sharp, those are the two notes that are not flattened in this D flat major scale, right? F sharp and C sharp, and then F natural and C natural. They're the only two notes that are not flattened in this D flat major scale. And all of the natural notes, D, E, G, A, and B, are the ones that are flattened in the other scale. So that's pretty interesting. Let's look at another pair of major scales. Okay, so here are two more scales, G major and G flat major. And aha, I see the exact same pattern going on with these two scales as well, do you? They both start on different notes, right? This one starts on a G and this one starts on a G flat, but they still start with the same letter, right? They both start with the letter G. And I can see that one scale has sharps and the other one has flats. And the one note that is sharpened in this G major scale, which is F sharp, is the one note that is not flattened in the G flat major scale, right? It's an F natural. And all the natural notes in the G major scale, which are G, A, B, C, D, and E, are the notes that are flattened in our G flat major scale. So I don't know about you, but I'm starting to see a pattern here. So let's try something out. I'm gonna write out one major scale, and then using the rules of this pattern, we'll see if we can write out the notes in another major scale that starts with the same letter. But first, let's quickly clarify what exactly are the rules of this pattern. So for our example, let's use an A major scale. Okay, so here's our A major scale, and really there are only two rules or steps to this pattern. So the first step is we ask ourselves, does this scale have sharps or flats in it? And whichever one it has, we're going to do the opposite of that in the other scale. So tell me, does this have sharps or flats in it, this A major scale? It has sharps, right? C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. So that means this other scale that we're going to write out is going to have flats in it. Okay, and step two, so any of the notes that have uh, accidentals in this first scale, and an accidental would just mean like a sharp or a flat, okay? So any of the notes that have accidentals or sharps or flats, those are going to be the natural notes in this new scale. So C sharp is going to be just a C natural, okay? F sharp will be just an F natural, and G sharp will be just a G natural. Cool? And then any of the natural notes in the first scale are going to become the notes with the accidentals in the second scale. And so what type of accidental am I going to use? Am I going to put a sharp or a flat? I'm gonna put a flat, right? Because we already established that this new scale needs to have flats in it because this one has sharps, so this one has flats. So I'm gonna take all these natural notes, which are just A, B, D, and E, and I'm going to flatten those. So we're gonna have A flat, B flat, D flat, and E flat. And hey, there you go. This is our A flat major scale. And I think it's important to point out that basically what we're doing is a note will never go from one type of accidental to another type of accidental, right? So this G sharp wouldn't turn into a G flat, right? It would only turn into a G natural. So basically we're, any accidental note in one scale turns into a natural note in the other, and any natural note in one scale turns into an accidental in the other. So we're trading just naturals for accidentals. We're not trading naturals for naturals, we're not trading accidentals for accidentals. Only a natural can turn into an accidental, and only an accidental can turn into a natural. Does that make sense? If not, keep watching and you're going to get the hang of it. Let's check out another scale. Okay, so here's an F major scale. Let's work through this one now together. So does this scale have sharps or flats in it? I see a flat, right? B flat. So what are we going to have in our new scale? Are we gonna have sharps or flats? We're gonna have sharps, right? Because if this one has flats, this one is gonna have sharps. 
Got it? So that's the first step. And now the next thing we're gonna do is any note that was an accidental note in this first scale becomes a natural note in our new scale. So we only have one note that has an accidental, which is the B flat, right? So that we know that's gonna become a B natural. Then any of the natural notes in our first scale, what is gonna to happen to those notes? Are we going to sharpen them or flatten them or keep them as natural notes? Well, we're going to sharpen all of them. So F becomes F sharp, G becomes G sharp, A becomes A sharp, C sharp, D sharp, and E sharp, right? And remember, they're all sharpened instead of flattened because this scale has flats, so this one has to have sharps. Always has to be opposites. And hey, what do you know? You just figured out the notes in an F sharp major scale. So F major scale and F sharp major scale. Not too bad, right? Okay, so how about a B flat major scale now? So first step, does this scale have sharps or flats in it? It has flats. So what is our new scale going to have? Is it going to have sharps or flats? It's going to have sharps, right? Because if this one has flats, our new one has to have sharps. So the next step, any of the notes that have accidentals in this first scale, which are B flat and E flat, right? Those are the only two notes that have accidentals. They are going to become our natural notes in the new scale. Because if it has an accidental in one scale, it has to be a natural note in the other, right? So this B flat is going to be a B, and this E flat is going to be an E. And then any note that was a natural note in our first scale, so that would be C, D, F, G, and A, those notes are going to have accidentals in our new scale. And are we gonna put uh, flats on them or sharps on them? Remember the first step, we, we established that this one has sharps. So therefore, the C, D, F, G, and A are going to have sharps put on them. So C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. And hey, check that out. You just wrote out the notes in a B major scale. Now, so far in this video, we've just been taking easier major scales and using them to figure out the notes in more difficult major scales. And I'm considering this scale of B flat to be easier than this scale of B because this scale only has two flats, whereas this scale has five sharps, right? So just based on the amount of accidentals we have, I would say that this B flat scale is quote easier unquote than this B major scale to memorize. However, this pattern works in both directions. So we could uh, take a more difficult scale and find the easier scale based on it. So, you know, for, let's actually work through that right now. So for instance, let's say you knew the notes in your B major scale, but you didn't know the notes in a B flat major scale. So this is where we're gonna be starting with and we're just gonna go the opposite direction just so you can see that it, it works in both directions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well this scale, this B major scale, does it have sharps or flats? It has sharps, right? So our new scale is going to have flats in it, right? And any of the notes that did have accidentals in them, so the C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp, those are going to be what in our new scale? Those are going to turn into natural notes, right? So I'm gonna have a C natural, a D natural, F natural, G natural, and A natural, right? And then the two notes that were natural, which were B and E, those notes are now going to have an accidental and are they gonna have a flat or a sharp? They're going to have flats, right? Because we said this new, this new scale is gonna have flats. So that's a B flat and an E flat. Cool. So as you can see, it works in both directions. So I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, now let's check out an E flat major scale and let's work through this one together. So first step, does this scale have sharps or flats in it? It has flats in it, right? So what is our new scale going to have? It's going to have sharps, right? Okay, so we know that much. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna say, okay, all these notes that have accidentals in this first scale, so that would be this E flat, A flat, and B flat. Those notes are going to be our natural notes in the new scale, right? So this E flat is gonna turn into an E natural. A flat is gonna turn into an A natural. B flat will turn into a B natural, right? And then what happens to these natural notes in the top scale? So this F, this G, this C, and this D. They are going to turn into, you tell me, F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp. 
Isn't that so cool and easy? I just love this because you really can only memorize just the top half of all your major scales and then you'll automatically be able to figure out all those trickier major scales. So it's just such a cool pattern. There's so many awesome patterns in music. It's just an endless joy discovering them and analyzing them and sharing them with you guys. So there's only one more scale left to check out. So let's just do that and then we will have completed every single major scale. Cool? So this is our C major scale, and I saved this one for last because it's a little bit unique, because as you can see, this one has no sharps and no flats. So how do we know uh, what the new scale is gonna have? Is it gonna have sharps or flats, since we can't do the opposite of whatever this one has? Well, we can actually have both a C sharp major scale and a C flat major scale. Both of those are real major scales. So let's start with our C sharp major scale. All right, well, I'll just, I know it's gonna be a C sharp. And hey, what's our pattern again? Basically anything that's a natural turns into an accidental, right? So we're gonna ba basically put a sharp, not basically, we are going to put a sharp in front or after every single note. We're going to sharpen every single one. See, C sharp, G sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and B sharp. That is your C sharp major scale. Okay, now let's check out a C flat major scale. So, C flat major scale, we're gonna start with our C flat. And, hey, again, same rules apply. If all these are naturals, we're going to put an accidental on all these notes. So it's gonna be C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat. Whoa. So yeah, actually the C, C flat, and C sharp are pretty easy because C sharp has all sharps, C flat has all flats, and C major has no sharps, no flats. And if you're someone who's asking yourself, hey, I thought there was no such thing as a C flat note, um, then I have a video that you need to watch. I, I'm just saying this because I get this comment a lot in my videos. So if you're one of those people who is very confused by this note C flat or F flat, um, I'm going to put a link to a video in the description below and I want you to check that out. Also, um, if you are curious about learning more about the circle of fourths and fifths, because it totally ties into everything we're doing with major scales and, and just being able to memorize your major scales. Um, I will also include two videos about the circle of fourths and fifths in the description below as well. And that is it. We just went through every single major scale. So as you can see, it's actually pretty easy. I mean, as long as you know these, the major scales E flat, B flat, F, C, G, D, and A, you also know all these scales on the bottom half of the circle. And that's just, I think, awesome. Now I have a nice handout that visually shows you the patterns in all these scales, as well as a quiz to help you practice remembering these patterns, and many other music theory worksheets and quizzes and handouts, and you can download all of those printable PDF worksheets and quizzes in a link in the description below. As I said, there are so many cool patterns within major scales, and this is just one of many that I wanted to show you because I think it's so cool and helpful. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you enjoyed it at all, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment as well. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. Uh, I would love if you could subscribe because I post one video a week and I would love to have you here. And if you wanna be notified whenever I do post a new video, don't forget to turn on your bell notification. All right guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night and stay tuned for next week. Bye.